Hello everyone, today is Friday the 13th, and in honor of that, we are going to look at a virus that activates its payload on Friday the 13th. This virus is the Jerusalem virus. Now, when we go ahead and run it, it will be present in memory and ready to infect files. This virus infects both .com and .exe files. So if we look at graphics.com, you can see it's 19,742 bytes. We'll go ahead and run the file. Jerusalem will infect it, and now when we look at its size, it is 21,555 bytes. So, Jerusalem has injected its code into the graphics program, and this is how most file infectors work. They will put their code at the end or the beginning of the program, and then add a few jump commands so that when you run a program, it will load the virus first, and then load the program you want. Now, this all happens so quickly that the average user would not notice any significant slowdown and the virus would be able to continue to spread to most of the executables on the system. Now, like I said, Jerusalem also infects exe files. So, we'll go ahead and pick one. How about... Oh, I don't know. We'll look at... Hmm, what's a good one? msd.exe, I don't know what that does. So you can see 158,470. When we run it, oh dear, it's an actual program. I don't want. I don't want. No, go away. You don't need to do that. No. No, it's okay. You're welcome for using your product, but I don't. I don't want to. Okay. Let's pick a different one. We'll pick a different one that's easier to see that it's infected. So Dell Tree. So yeah, Dell Tree.exe sounds good. So that's 11,111. Very easy number to remember. We run Deltree. We don't have any parameters set, so it doesn't actually delete anything. You'll see that it increased to 12,928. However, Jerusalem has a bug in that it reinfects executable files with .exe extensions multiple times. So as you can see, it increased again. Now this will increase and increase until eventually the program becomes too large to fit in memory and will crash when you attempt to run it. And that's pretty noticeable for a user using their system when one of their favorite programs no longer runs. So one bug on part of the author that could alert the user to the virus's presence. Now we'll take a look at its payload which activates every Friday the 13th as long as the year is not, uh, what is it, 1988 I believe? and whenever we try to run any file instead of infecting it okay it infected it so uh, we'll go ahead and restart here apparently it didn't register the date change so restarting will allow us to see it in action and if you would like to check out a different video on Jerusalem on neutral one of my I guess virus testing idols who inspired me to make my own videos made a video on it about a week ago so you can go ahead and check that out by clicking the link in the description or this annotation. Alright, so now it is Friday the 13th. Try to run infected files, runs it, and now the virus is present in memory. And now any file you attempt to run will produce this error message. So scroll in here so you can see it. Hold on a bad command or file name and you'll notice that command is capitalized now on the actual error message sorry the actual error message just type in gibberish you see command is not capitalized so every executable you attempt to run produces this error you might say oh that's pretty annoying kinda kinda pointless kind of an asshole thing of Jerusalem to do well yeah, it's it's pretty mean. And then you find out that instead of infecting these files, it is displaying this message and deleting them. So every file you're attempting to run is deleted. So you'll probably think, oh my computer's all bugged out. Better restart. So once you reboot, DOS will no longer load properly, and you'd better hope you have good backups that aren't also infected with Jerusalem in order to restore the files you've lost. So quite destructive. And there are many, many variants of Jerusalem that I'll be taking a look at in the future. 
and I hope you all have a happy and safe Friday the 13th. And that's about it.